Hey everybody, today I've put together some tips for Windows users. If you've got a new Windows system or perhaps for Linux and Mac OS users, if you are using a Windows machine for a particular purpose, you might also find these tips useful. Let's get into it. Tip number one, on a fresh system, run Chris Titus Tech Windows Utility. We're gonna right click on the start menu, terminal administrator, say yes to the UAC prompt, and we're gonna run IWR-USB, enter the URL, HTTPS, Chris, Titus.com slash win. We're going to pipe that into IEX and hit enter. It'll download the file and it will pop up the graphical interface. Okay, so you've got several tabs across the top on things that you can do. As you can see in this first tab, the install tab, you can install multiple pieces of software which is great. So for instance, if you are like me and do not like Microsoft Edge, you can download Brave or Chrome or Chromium or Firefox or any of a number of others without ever having to launch Edge, which is wonderful. So there's that part of this. Moving over here to tweaks. Now, you want to be careful when you do this, right? But I like doing a restore point, delete temporary files. You can do others of these if you'd like. We're going to do enable end task with right click, and we'll circle around to this one again later. And then the one from the caution advanced tweaks section, we want to run remove OneDrive. And then we say run tweaks. Now this is going to do things in the background here, and it'll tell you when it's done, and then we can move on to the next part. Tasks are finished. So no more OneDrive on this machine. So it's still down here. We're going to say quit OneDrive. And maybe just for grins, we'll run that again just to make sure. Double check this. Just to make sure we're getting rid of that. I I'm not a OneDrive fan. So. Your mileage may vary. Okay, so we've got stuff done here on the tweaks tab. You can run through a few of these other ones, which is great. Config. This has some interesting things like uh, NFS, the network file system, uh, and you can enable the legacy F8 boot recovery menu. So that's cool. We're going to say install features and that's probably done already. A reboot may be required. Cool. Updates. This is useful if you want to prevent your Windows system from downloading the feature updates and limit it to security updates, right? This can be helpful in not getting bad updates and not being a Microsoft beta tester and let other people do that, right? Because you never know when one of these bad patches is going to come through and fork your system. All right. So typically I will do this one recommended update settings loaded. Okay. So we can go ahead and close this and we're done with the Titus utility tip number two. Check your date and time settings. So we come down here to the bottom right corner. We've got the clock, right click, adjust date and time. Make sure your time zone is correct. Now, instead of setting this properly during installation time or initial setup time, Microsoft installs seem to default to Pacific time. 
which is the home of Microsoft HQ. So I guess I could understand it, but it's still an annoyance. So knowing about this is helpful. Tip number three, DNS. So again, we're going to right click the start menu. We're going to go to network connections. We are going to come down to ethernet. Scroll down and we're going to click edit here next to DNS server assignment. We'll change the drop down to manual and we can change IPv4 to on and then you can put in your preferred DNS and alternate DNS. Now, this might be useful if you are testing something specific. It might be useful if you are using public Wi-Fi. Uh, obviously, in that case, you would go to the Wi-Fi settings instead of the Ethernet settings. This is a virtual machine and doesn't have Wi-Fi. Anyway, under normal conditions, you would likely want to set this on your router or firewall, but it's helpful to know where to find this on a Windows system in those cases where you may need to change it on the fly. Tip number four, enable the end task in the right click menu for taskbar. So we're going to navigate to settings using your preferred me method. My preferred method is right clicking the start menu and hitting setting. We're gonna select system. We're gonna come down to for developers. And as you can see, this is already turned on. We did that using the Titus uh, Windows utility. So what does it this give us? Well, if we come down here and we right click on the icon for our settings app, we've got the end task. And this can be useful in cases where your system is slowing down and it's going to take a little more effort to get it to actually launch task manager. And this can be one of those useful things that can help you out of a situation, right? Tip number five, personalize the taskbar. So on this system, you can see I've already done some personalization on this, but if we right click the taskbar and say taskbar settings, you can see that I've hidden the search, I've turned off Copilot, and I've disabled widgets, all of which I find to be unnecessary for my use case. Again, your mileage may vary, but if you are not wanting all that extra stuff, or perhaps you are normally using a Mac or a Linux system and want to personalize some things, great tip to know about. All right, and here's a bonus tip. Use the built-in multiple desktop experience. If you have the task view turned on from tip number five, personalizing the taskbar, you will have this button right here next to the start menu. And here it shows desktop one, which we're on, and it gives you the option to add a desktop. So now we've got desktop one, desktop two. They look the same. Let's launch Audacity here on one, actually on number two. And if we come back here, we've got desktop one, and we'll launch the advanced IP scanner. Okay, so now when we come down here and hover, we can easily move back and forth between them. You can also do control windows and arrow buttons to take you between the desktops. So when might you find this to be a useful feature? Well, if you're coming from Linux or Mac OS, both of which have had this multiple desktop, also called virtual desktop feature for years, you might find this useful to have on Windows. And finally, in the past couple of years, Microsoft has seen fit to build it in. Previously, it was available as an add-on. So if you are using a laptop, which has only one screen and you don't have an external monitor attached, this can be particularly useful. So you can have you know, several virtual desktops and you might have each of them set up for a different task. So perhaps we want to go to 
uh, number three, and maybe we want to have Adobe Reader open ov over here if we're going to be reading in some some document for whatever reason, right? Uh, we got a, a welcome file. Okay, doesn't want to cooperate with us now, but you get the point. And we can move back and forth pretty easy, right? And that, my friends, will bring us to the end of this video. Let me know in the comments which tip was your favorite, or if you have a particular tip that I didn't cover, let me know that as well. Until next time, thanks for watching.